Gwen is a natural resources agent, as she told us, and she's come up to talk to us about things we can do when we've got a shoreline on that interface between the land and the water. That's right. And why is that such a particularly difficult place to get just right? So one of the most common calls we get to our extension office about ponds is about shoreline erosion upon, along yeah. the ponds. And it can be an aesthetic issue if you have a backyard pond that you want to go fishing with your grandchildren in. But it also can be a safety hazard. You want to be um, near a pond that has some erosion issues, you could fall in. You don't want to fall in. That's right. Or it can also be some water quality problems, too, mm -hmm. that that poses with that uh, sediment that's going into the pond. So we want to try to control that by using different types of options. And so people a lot of times just put turf grass up there. Um, and what are some of the problems with that? So mowed turf grass al along the pond's edge, um, it doesn't have the same tolerance to wet conditions or wet soils that you would want to have in there, and so it can't really tolerate that real moist conditions. And then it also doesn't do well with some of the wave action, wind action that mm -hmm. you see in pond and fluctuating water levels. And so when that happens, it kind of, it just doesn't, it isn't able to stabilize that bank like it needs to. Okay. All right. Well, I think you've got some <laughs> pictures that show some of this, so let's look at them. So this is an example of um, one of those eroded shorelines we talked about. That's and as you can horrible. see, it does, yeah. doesn't it? And it's, who'd want to push a lawnmower on that? Slope, I know. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't want to. And yeah. um, you can get that. You can see it's having that undercut bank that's mm -hmm. occurring there. So if somebody walked down, the soil might collapse beneath them. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what we suggest people and the do. The dirty. It, right. It yeah. does put sediment in there, and that can carry a whole lot of other stuff mm -hmm. to cause some water quality problems. So what we suggest people do is actually consider uh, using a wetland or aquatic type vegetation along uh -huh. their ponds, um, and that has the denser root system that can help stabilize those banks, withstand some of those fluctuating water levels. Well, let's see what they look like yeah. when we do that. Um, so this is an um, example of a project we did with Master Pond Manager where we um, they were dredging their pond down in Charleston County and we installed some powdery alligator flag in there with the class. And you can see the next photo, it shows you what that ended up looking like. And so this Whoa. is around their foray. Really grew in next season. And Looked you said really you nice. put them about how far apart, dear? This is about a foot and a half to three feet and apart. And within a year, you get beautiful establishment. It really grows That's in. just incredible. It does a good job of outcompeting some of those invasive plants you don't want in your pond Okay. Systems. All righty. Next photo we had, um, this is Typical pond that we often see in many of our communities, mowed turf grass right up to that pond's edge. They went in, um, I think it was actually a project with Clemson, and we worked with Charleston Aquatic Nursery. You know, another that. thing that happens when you just got that, I think it attracts those horrible Canada geese too, doesn't it? Yes, so because they like that line of sight they in the like water's that line edge. of sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody wants those because you talk about having dirty water. That's Ooh. right. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so you can see the next picture was after um, they put in um, some oh, shoreline plants there. I think it looks really nice, really pretty, really Isn't nice. Isn't it option. lovely? It, it really is. is. Yeah, and so um, the last um, photos I wanted to show you was actually a workshop we did. Um, we had some volunteers help uh -huh. us putting in some shoreline plants. And you can see the after um, next spring where <gasps> they filled in with some juncus and pickerel weed, which I'm going to show you in a few moments. And so I think it's a really nice way of supporting that pond bank, providing some water quality benefits, and getting some biodiversity in your pond as well. Now, what if you like to go swimming or you want to put a boat on or something, you need a little area, can you have a sandy beach? Oh, yes. Would that much. be okay to do something yeah. like that? Yeah, and you can really select different types of plants and heights um, and spacing that you want to do to kind of protect the areas you want to, but then fill in where, you, where the other places where you don't. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you brought some of the plants and they look yes. just beautiful. Yes, I did. Um, so um, I wanted to show you all, too, um, the first one was powdery alligator flag, um, and that's here that's on the that front left. That's that big old taller than I that's am, right. practically. Yeah, so this one can go to seven feet in height. Golly. And it's a great um, for attracting pollinators, too. So it can actually attract some of our butterflies in. Um, but it has a really tall, pretty purple bloom on a tall stalk. Um, and it's really nice for um, areas that get a lot of inundation. So some of our stormwater oh. ponds is a really good one so to put So it can in really there. handle that That's right. rushing water. Yep. Now it's going to stay green all winter. That one uh, it will die back. Um, oh, so it will. you can go back in and you can prune it back or um, cut it back for the next fall for the fall. Do you have to cut it back? Or would that just part just uh, decay? With stormwater, it, it's actually a good idea because it can kind of pull out some of that organic material that can oh, go in your pond okay, and, and okay. contribute so you, to algae okay. and other problems. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah, so it's a good idea to do. Well, that's a good tip. Thanks for, for telling me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the next plant I wanted to show you, too, is Juncus effusius. It's here in the front left. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, this is a nice one. If you um, are just kind of thinking about getting into um, shoreline planting, this is a good one to try. It's a really nice background plant. You can kind of pop in some other ones that have a little more showy color. It's a nice one, too, for um, really withstanding a lot of fluctuation. And that's one we call bulrush. It's a rush, mm -hmm. bulrush. And also, I think a lot of these have such broad leaves mm -hmm. and are a lighter green. This is a wonderful contrast yeah, because is. the texture and color are so different. 
and that makes plantings far more interesting yeah. when you've got a little this and that going on, mm -hmm. don't you think? And it'll stay green almost year round. Okay. Yeah. Um, another nice one is this pickle weed here on the front left. This is Pontideria cordata. Um, so this is um, one that I use a lot with some of our projects we've done. Um, it spreads really easily, so if you're not quite sure if you want to do it, maybe you don't want to want to get some bang for your buck, this is a good one to put in. Okay. Um, and the it, color's so pretty when isn't it's blooming. It? Yeah, Lovely. I think so too. This is yeah. another nice summer fall bloomer. Now there's some purple plants that are invasive. We do not want to use those. We want That's to be right. sure that we get the right one. This mm -hmm. is pickleweed, That's pickleweed, not water hyacinth. Yeah, we do not want to want things okay. like water hyacinth. So be sure hot. that you're getting something yeah. that's... Yeah, make sure you're using that Latin name when okay. you're asking. Okay, good. So. Um, so coming over here, these are some of our other plants. These are ones that may be moving up the slope a little bit in mm -hmm. your pond. So they, these aren't in the wet, wet water. Right, a little bit more on the upper margin okay. of your buffer. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is a really interesting one. This is a white top sedge. I just love white top sedge. Isn't it's it neat? so much fun. Yeah, I think so too. I think these are, this is a modified leaf and it really... Um, it looks like the flower, and it's not that far as actually that little one in the a little white in the middle. We'll get there. Dr. John to give us a tutorial after the end of yeah. the show. <laughs> <laughs> he can, but um, this is a nice one. I think it adds just a little bit of contrast to the oh, pond edge too, because it's yeah. such a unique shape. Um, Another two options, um, these are in the Labellia family. Mm -hmm. This is um, Labellia cardinalis or cardinal flower. So this is a really nice one if you're a bird watcher or like viewing wildlife. This is gonna, one that's going to attract the ruby-throated thirty hummingbird. My um, goodness. And so you can see with that flower shape how well their beaks would probably would fit in there. But um, this is a nice one for that. Again, it's an upper margin one. This other one back there, which is one Dr. John told me earlier, is actually good for kind of our upstate friends, is a big, big blue Labellia, Labellia syphilis. And actually, um, I've got that one in my garden. And I'm at oh, St. Matthew's, which is about as upstate as a tabletop, <laughs> and it is doing just fine. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and then the last ones I want to show you over here on the right, um, and it's not blooming, it just kind of passed its bloom time. This is Hibiscus mosjustos. There's a couple different hibiscus that work well around stormwater ponds and fishing ponds. This one's common name is also called marshmallow. It has a big white blue. And we see it in ditches sometimes. I yeah. mean, imagine yeah. if it were in a ditch. Yeah. But it how much easier. Well. Yeah. And I think that's the Part of the take home of this is these are easy once you get established. Very much. They really are going to low maintenance. Gonna, yeah, low maintenance mm -hmm. and are going to keep the water so much cleaner. Now, if you've got these planted too and you've got some. Um, something that's not so nice that washes down with the stormwater, are these plants going to kind of stop that um, pollutant and kind of help filter it through so the soil? So if, um, if you're really thinking about wanting to do some of that benefit, you want to have a wide buffer along okay. your pond's edge, and it will help kind of filter some of that flow moving across your land from your lawn. So yes, very much so. Vegetative buffers are a good water quality practice. Now, I've got some friends who could benefit from learning some more about this. Do y'all have any workshops that they can sign up and where they could get more in-depth information? So Clemson Extension has done a lot of work in pond management over the past many years, uh -huh. actually. Um, and so um, one of the ones I wanted to um, highlight was Master Pond Manager. It's actually starting tomorrow, but it's an Ooh. online field-based oh. course. Um, uh -huh. We dive into, no pun intended, uh, stormwater <laughs> and recreational pond management with that. But um, we talk about fish stocking, uh, liming your pond, uh, Pond bottom sampling, how to do shoreline buffers, inspecting your stormwater treatment, pond, yeah. herbicide treatment. So it really, the person will walk so away with a lot of knowledge. Most of it's online. That's right. Yep. So most of it's a it's a multi week online course, and then um, it's a two day intensive field training. Oh, okay. Okay. So you do get to come and put all the things you've learned into That's practice right. and fine tune them mm -hmm. with the experts. That's right. That just sounds fascinating. But if you don't want to have that much in depth, we put up some pictures, some links earlier to just all the wonderful. Um, fact sheets you've got, yeah. you can get a lot of information just by going to HGIC right. mm -hmm. and finding the information you put up. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming and um, brightening our set and making making um, us all get very excited about having a pond in our backyard or even just a retention pond because the same it should have the same treatment. Mm -hmm. We want to keep all that water clean. That's right. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks so much.